back on the workbench. Today we're, we're going to be doing something quite a bit different than usual. There's been a lot of hubbub over the last day about footballs and inflation pressure. So I thought I'd break out some of the tools from the garage and break out a football. And let's do a couple experiments with the football and see what happens when we change the temperature of a football and the air pressure. So what I've got here is I've got a Wilson football. It says NFL on the side. I purchased this from a sporting goods store probably about seven or eight years ago. It's been sitting in the garage for about the last year or so and used for just throwing around the backyard with friends. Uh, nothing special about it. Uh, just a football here. I know it's not an actual real game ball, but I think this should give us an idea of what actually goes on. So what I also have here is I've got a digital multimeter uh, with a thermocouple attached. That'll read me the ambient air temperature I'm, uh, for wherever I attach the probe here at the end. And I also have, just to give us a second uh, data point here, I have a porter cable uh, infrared, let me turn it off here, a porter cable infrared thermometer to be able to also just give us more temperature data that we'll be using to be able to look at the temperature of this football. So we're, in the, we're actually inside my house and in the basement. And if I move my camera here just right, uh, if we look at the digital multimeter, which you should see on the screen right here, and I'll touch the thermocouple to the football. And you'll see it's saying the football is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if I reach down inside the laces, so if we go right here in the slot right here, down inside the laces, that's saying it's 71. If I touch it to the surface, it's saying it's 70. Another part here, 71. So we're somewhere between 70 and 71 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you that are uh, up north or elsewise and use metric, we're right somewhere around about 21 degrees Celsius or centigrade. As I touch the ball, you can see how that's pretty consistent there for the temperature of the ball. And since we're inside right now, the temperature is not going to change. So we'll just leave it at, at that. Now I also have my infrared thermometer. Let me turn this on. And so if I just look here, and this is the digital readout, we want to look here is at the number on the bottom here. Just by looking at the football here, this is saying the number at the bottom is about 71 degrees on the surface. Wherever I point this at, 70, 70.4, 70.5. So you get the idea we're uh, at room temperature, or maybe just a little bit below, depending upon your comfort level, um, for the football. So now if we take this football here, let me zoom out. And now the next thing we need to do is look at, well, what's the air pressure of this football? So to help us figure out the air pressure of the football, I've got two things. Number one, I took a just a basic tire gauge, used some Teflon tape, and attached a sports needle to it. And this has a readout here at the bottom. You know, that normally reads out. This goes from 5 to 50 pounds on this side, uh, or 0 0.5 to 35 kilograms on the other side. So uh, this is something usually used for tires and looking at tire pressure, but I thought this would be a good tool for us to look at football pressure. So we take the football and we turn it around. And so right now, as I've got it set up, let's see if I can get this right on camera. And I plug this into the inflation hole. And right now I'm actually not getting a reading. The ball is rather underinflated now. And you, uh, you can hear that deflating. So as that deflates here, you can see where I can squeeze the ball rather easily. Um, I also have, for our testing purposes, let me get the multimeter out of the way for now, I also have a Porter Cable 18-volt uh, inflator here in the background. And this actually has a nifty little feature when I flip this over that I can plug in the needle here. And if you're above 5 PSI, it'll give us a digital reading of what the inflation pressure is here. Uh, hopefully you can see that on screen there. This is in PSI. So our NFL football rules say it's got to be between 12.5 and 13.5 uh, PSI uh, for it to be an acceptable game ball. Uh, so right now if I plug this in, this should be just a little low. It won't even register until you get to 5 PSI. So let's see if we can... So now I got it pumped all the way up to, uh, maybe you can see there, about 12 PSI. That's a multimeter beeping over there that I haven't touched it. So we're at 12 PSI. 
11 and a half PSI, somewhere in there. And if we look at, if I pull this out here, let's look at how the ball handles. At about 12 PSI, I can get a, a pretty decent grip on the ball. I can wrap my thumb around it. I can still give it a little squeeze. And I can work it in just a little bit here to get a good grip on it with my hand. But we got to be between 12 0.5 and 13.5 psi for NFL rules. So we'll look at. Uh, so we still have. We're still just a little below uh, the official inflation pressure. So let's raise the pressure on this. We'll push that in there, and we'll add a little more. Air. Okay. So now. I'm on the overinflated end at about 18 PSI. If you can see the gauge there in the back. So at 18 PSI, this is above NFL legal pressure. And at this point, I'm not able to actually get my thumb to dig into the ball. You know, it's definitely a much stiffer, much harder ball. So now we've got to let some air pressure out of this here. So I'll try to go for about 13 PSI as my target. Okay, there we go. Now we're exactly at 13 PSI. You can see on the reader there. So we're sitting right here in the middle of the NFL standards. And with this football, we'll pull that out. And just to double check this here, we'll use our improvised tool here so you can see that we're taking these me measurements in a couple different ways. And now when I stick... That out there, this is showing uh, about 12 or a little bit more. It's not the most accurate on this gauge here. That's why I like the digital readout here. We'll come back to the digital readout and just make sure we didn't let the air pressure down too much from that test. And we'll put that in. And looks like that dropped it to about 11.5 PSI. So we're going to have to add a little more air back to the ball. 11 and a half, 12. Just a little more air. There we go, so now we're back at 13 PSI on our reading. 13, 13.5 PSI, so we can let out just a hair more air. There we go, now we're stable at 13. Uh, nope, I guess we're going up just a little bit here. Let's see if we can get... There we go, that should be stable. Yeah, uh, we're there we go, we're 13, 13.5 PSI. There we go. Now we're stable at 13 PSI. So let me go ahead and pull this out. And so now when I look at the football here, and I try to get my hand in at a legal pressure here, I can still dig my thumb in a little bit, but not as well as I could at a lower PSI. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this ball and place it outside, and then we're going to plug it back in after the ball sits out for 30 minutes and see what the air pressure does. Okay, we're back outside on my deck. And just with a the thermocouple outside, the, the ambient air temperature right now is about 39 degrees. So we're pretty close to what the temperature was in Foxborough during the AFC Championship game. And if we touch the football right now, this is showing about 40 degrees. If you can read there. So we'll let, this, uh, we'll let the ball adjust to the environment. We won't touch it at all. Just let it adapt to the environment. And so we will then set a kitchen timer here for 30 minutes and we'll come back and check on this uh, when the bell goes off.
we're at 43 degrees, 43 degrees, and the surface of the football, I'm sorry, I'm casting the shadow here, if I can stay out of the shadow here, 44 degrees, 44 degrees, and this has been out here for 30 minutes. So now let's use our Porter Cable gauge here and look at the air pressure of the ball. So now, as you can see, the digital readout there on the screen. And we'll go ahead and plug the needle. And just like this. So now as we watch it adjust here, after the football being exposed uh, outside for about 30 minutes, the air pressure has dropped somewhere around about 9 PSI. And as I play with the football here, 9.5 PSI, it's definitely more pliable than it was earlier. I can dig my fingers into the laces and dig the laces into the ball. So as you want to think about uh, what's going on with the talk about the Patriots, uh, it's hard to rule out the weather having some sort of implication uh, on the deflation of the balls. Um, so just want to use a couple uh, simple garage tools here to shed some light on what's going on in the NFL today. So thanks and have a great day. Okay, so if you think back to applying a high school or a college level chemistry class to our data, we can do an extra sanity check on the results to see uh, what the implications are. So if we convert the indoor and the outdoor data from PSI and degrees Fahrenheit respectively to Pascals and Kelvin, we can then apply the ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. In other words, the pressure in Pascals times the volume in cubic meters or liters uh, has to be equal uh, to the number of moles of the gas. Uh, times R, our universal gas constant, and T, uh, in other words, the temperature in Kelvin. We can then make some assumptions as we uh, consider what we're working with here. And these assumptions, uh, because we're, the football is going to be the same, we're only looking at one football, that the composition of the air in the football is the same in both the indoor and the outdoor condition. And then number two, that the volume in the air is the same uh, in both states, that we're not going to have any air leaks coming into or out of the football. Um, and so if we consider those, that will allow us to make a couple simplifying assumptions. So therefore, the number of moles of gas uh, should remain constant. And number two, a change in temperature would then result uh, in a change in the observed pressure. With those assumptions, we can now rewrite our ideal gas law for comparison uh, for P times V uh, divided by NRT of the indoor condition has to be equal to P times V divided by NRT of the outdoor condition. Uh, because of the assumptions that we're able to make, uh, we're assuming the volume is the same, so we can strike that out of both sides. The number of moles is the same, and the, ga and the gas constant is the same. Therefore, we can simplify this into pressure divided by temperature of the indoor has to be equal to the ratio of pressure divided by the temperature of the outdoor ball. And so accordingly, we should be able to predict the outdoor pressure of the ball before we even actually take a measurement, or we could then solve for the temperature of the ball outdoors, and we'll be able to solve this both ways. So now if we set up the ratios that we just talked about here, trying to solve for the outdoor pressure, and we then solve for that, uh, we get a volume, or I'm sorry, an expected or predicted outdoor pressure of 12.37 PSI. That's obviously very different than what we observed. Or if we rearrange the equation and we try to solve for the outdoor temperature, uh, the outdoor temperature, and this is the most obvious of the two errors that we find here, is predicted to be negative 73 degrees Fahrenheit. It's obviously a positive value. Um, and so accordingly, um, our, the ideal gas law was violated and most likely due to a loss of volume of air in the football. So when we consider the results of this experiment, just bear this in mind when we put this through a little bit of scientific scrutiny. Uh, there could have been some other error due to the observation equipment uh, that was used uh, to be able to record our data. But this, hopefully this gives you an idea of just a quick test as well as the mathematics behind how we can estimate uh, temperature and pressure relationships for a football uh, as you uh, enjoy your football conversations leading up to the big game uh, a week from Sunday. Thanks and have a great day.